How's it going, Blades community? We have the three-time arena champ, Dagon, in the house. Let's give it up for Dagon. Four-time. Four-time. Jeez, my bad. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Sorry about that. Hey, it's, it's good. Thank you for having me here. It's good to be here. Dude, I'm going to restart it. I, I, I can't. Dude, that's great. No, keep that in. That's funny. Like, that's, that's a little... That's a little bit. Like, just keep that in there. All right, cool. If you want... No, it's fine. Okay, we can start over. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> on a count of three. I edited it. I re I edited. I like ninja edited. Yeah, actually, it, I saw so. it though. Yeah. All right. In <laughs> three, two, one. How's it going, Blades community? We have Dagon, the four-time Grand Champion Arena. Let's give it up for Dagon, baby. <laughs> Hello, Yoshi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, thanks hey, for thanks for doing it. Yeah, no problem, man. So, uh, how did you get into Blades? Well, um, I, like the other two people you interviewed, uh, it started with Morrowind. Right. <laughs> it always starts with, not always, but it usually starts with the Elder Scrolls series, right? Right. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I played Morrowind on the, it was on Xbox, right? Yeah. Yeah. Played Morrowind. The original. Yeah. Um, I was a Dunmer lover at the time. Mm-hmm. Super into it. Um, it was Honestly, of the three, well, if you don't count Blades, of the three main Elder Scrolls um, series games I've played, it was the most immersive, but it it was old, you know, and yeah. the combat was a little, little wonky. I don't know if you've played Morrowind. Yes, but. well, yeah, it's like, it's, uh, the what is it? It's called, like, a turn base, you know, like, the, the rolling a dice, that's what they say, you know, so it's, you really need to have your weapons, like, at 50 let's say to have a decent shot right yeah it's just yeah. weird um i'm glad that they it's definitely like a quality of life update with oblivion and skyrim well where the the uh rating of your or the level of your weapon ability didn't determine your accuracy right it's so like you needed basically the higher the skill level mm -hmm. the more likely you were going to hit the enemy exactly and it's kind of frustrating obviously if you start you start the game everyone starts as like a what what's the term like novice yeah. so you don't hit anything and it's just like enemies hitting you and it, even then it was still fun to to run around and um explore the world know, yeah yeah and then i did i did play a lot of skyrim i really the graphics Seriously, it made up for a lot of the, like, obviously the gameplay is what sells the Elder Scrolls games, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, and it hasn't really been considered the most beautiful game, but Skyrim was really attractive. It was. And, um, like, a lot of the, of course the human races look better, but, like, um, the, the animal races look really good. Like, they really did the Argonians and Khajiits justice. Mm -hmm. And I started to like Argonians a lot more uh, when Skyrim was released. And they became my favorite race from Skyrim. But my original, originally, uh, Dark Elves were my uh, favorite race. Yeah. Well, you told me, like, you know, you like the raspy voice and stuff. Uh... Die, Fetcher! Yeah, you it, they were cool. Uh, like, yeah. you know, well, well, first of all, Morrowind is where the the Dunmer are originally from. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to play the race that of the um, province right. that you're playing in. That and also they, they just were so badass. They sounded cool. Yeah. They were threatening. They were like uh the spell sword. Uh they're like the spell sword race. Yeah. Like they they deal good damage with destruction magic, but they also can like will uh, use a sword. And what was that uh was the bone mold armor? I forget what it's called. But that armor is so badass. Yeah. I, I seriously, you have to look it up for me. But the bone, the bone mold armor was badass. No, it was for sure. Uh, I'm I'm checking it out right now. Yeah, it's like they had the the yellowish uh, glow kind of thing. Yeah, with the shield with the spikes. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm like, what I'd always try to do on a new uh, a new save is I'd I'd try to kill the guard just to get their armor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned, well, I, I mean, obviously I know that you play League, but, uh, you know, you also played a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! So were you, like, competitive in both of those things? Or oh, like... yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm, don't get me started on either of those games, because it, the this Blades 
video is going to be become a League Yu-Gi-Oh video. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely played... I played both those games quite competitively. Um, highest I ranked in League was... I'd say challenger jp but jp's kind of uh kind of a dead server so i don't i don't know if that's really that much of an accomplishment but well, it is maps, for me. I, I did get masters na okay um that's an accomplishment and Yu Gi Oh, i didn't really do any regionals but my locals i was consistently topping and top eighting or i did win a few first first places as well so that was awesome. pretty cool and i still have all my Yu Gi Oh stuff worth a fortune if anyone wants to buy it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, you're an OG. You know, uh, can we talk about yeah. that for a bit? Like, early the early Blades uh, era, uh, area kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, Switch, I really wish I had the, the, the timeline for this, but um, I came around when uh, Blades was officially ported to switch right so uh, as most people know Blade, blades was originally a, a mobile game so and they didn't they hadn't ported it to switch into like what a year into development was it a year and a half so like a lot of people had already established themselves in the game basically mm -hmm. so i was uh, like a different generation coming in i'm still technically pretty old compared to you probably yoshi and a lot of players today but um i was probably coming in about a year a year and a few months after uh the official release of blades on mobile so um yeah it's 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 not too different from playing on mobile but there are some different uh disadvantages mostly disadvantages to playing on switch yeah um but um just that if you go from like it's just it's clunkier. the The game isn't made for Switch. Um, things are slowed down. I honestly think by about point uh, five seconds, like it, it's it stutters. Yeah. Like if you if you played on mobile and you play on Switch, like even the fight when the fight loads in, mobile players actually load in faster than uh, Switch players. Yeah. Well, I always feel like my opponents always have a, like an edge at the beginning where they could throw in like a nice right? hit. No, maybe, right. Wait. Oh, if you get to say, yeah, Yoshi, you're you're one of the other. <laughs> What one of the, one of the the other Switch players? Yeah, and then we have the Estelle, top. but yeah, that's it. But yeah, but you know, honestly, Dagon, uh, it's because of you that uh, I still kind of play this game. Honestly, you know, because like you give the inspiration for like the Switch players, you know, and uh, awesome. that's it. I'm really I'm really honored to hear that. That's uh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I I've always been a console player, mm -hmm. so I you know call me a boomer or whatever, but I <laughs> I just. I don't know, like, I have a phone. I can play Blades and download it on my phone. It's just, I don't like having games on my phone. It's weird. Yeah, I same. just want to yeah. play it on a console and keep it on my console. And uh, it doesn't, like, whenever I play, I, I did download Blades on, on mobile and played it a few times. And I don't know, I, I don't think it's that much different. I think it's it's just way smoother. It's a better experience on mobile. Right. There's, you will not find a player in this game who says, who has played on both and said that they enjoyed playing on Switch more, or that uh, on the basis that it's just smoother. Right. It not it the game they they didn't fix a lot of uh, nicks. But like you mentioned oh, yeah. though, um, it's like you know like at the beginning like you know like I find mobile players have an edge for like the first move with the first swing kind of thing and yeah. also like changing gear in between rounds like you know it kind of lags. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. You're, you know I should have I should have written down the differences, but yeah, um, changing gears far slower on Switch. The max you can get is maybe three if you straight go straight into it. Yeah, you can't um, like on mobile you can scroll down to pieces a lot a lot quicker, but like on switch anytime you press a piece of equipment it lags like yeah. two seconds yeah i should and then it. you have to yeah go down with but every time you're scrolling down that also lags yeah <laughs> so it's the system. like it's the system it has nothing to do with uh connection whatsoever right. it's the system um and yeah you, you can maybe get like you the max you can do is two pieces and one potion or three pieces yeah like you cannot do more than that and and you have to be very quick, like straight going straight into it. Yeah. Um, 
However, this I don't know if this is a bug, but if you change a piece right as it hits zero, it causes your game to crash, and then you just lose the match. Yeah, um, I think I've had that, yeah. Um, I don't know if it also... It, I wouldn't be surprised if it also happens to mobile players, but it's less likely to happen to mobile players because it's a lot uh, more smoother. It's a smoother to yeah. get to your pieces quicker. Um, but yeah, I, I came in as a Switch player. I'm still a Switch player, proudly. Um, and I've had a lot of weird... I don't want to say accusations thrown in my direction, but um, people have made very petty attempts to discredit my climb mm -hmm. and my ascension to the the top of the arena. And to that, I just say, well, you know, like get good. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. What to say. <laughs> like it has nothing to do with the switch, dude. Yeah. Like, but um, early blades for me. Um, it's weird. I I loved. I love. I, I still love arena. I loved arena. But as I climbed, obviously, and started f fighting uh, better players, better equipped players, uh, more knowledgeable players, it became super super frustrating. And um, there's a few reasons it was super frustrating. Obviously, um, just I lacked basic knowledge. Like at this point, I wasn't in a guild, and I was playing like I was playing a bone shaver, Argonian. And like the highest I could get was like sixteen or seventeen hundred cups. Like I could not break anything. Okay. And this was during a time when like the blocking mechanic was also super frustrating to deal with. Um, like you can uh, reset block by just um, pressing block twice. So normally, and now if you try to spam block, it will stay low. But back then, if you spammed it, your your second block would come in high. So it's like block, block, and then now it's high. Um, that wasn't the only reason why blocking was incredibly OP. The second reason it was really OP is that um, even if you blocked an attack in low block, your shield's primary enchantments and secondary enchantments would apply. Wow, okay. So th there was almost like, it was like almost optimal to just spam the block button like you didn't you didn't get punished for it basically and it's weird i think the um like obviously you know we see how strong breachers are nowadays um i wish and i knew i know there were a few maybe two or three strong breachers when i was playing the game uh, early early on um but it's weirdly enough they they weren't like um dominating as you would expect in such a like block focused meta um I don't know why. Maybe it's a. Uh, I think two enders have gotten better. I think that's another thing is people just have just gotten better at the game. And if breach if the breaches of today existed back then, they would have destroyed right people who did that. Like like that, I'm I'm very confident in that. Um, people have just gotten better for sure. And uh, but yeah, it was very frustrating to play against. And um, so I made a Reddit post uh, looking for a guild and. I was recruited by Boobaloo. Mm -hmm. I call him Booba. You guys know him as Boobaloo. Um, who was, a, at the time, he was part of Dragonborn, but now known as Bloodborne. Um, he had no... There was basically no requirements, or not many requirements, I remember at the time. They were just like, oh, you're passionate about the game? You want to you wanna join us? I was like, oh, wow, you guys are like rank 13. That's kind of cool. You guys are just picking me up. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, he, they shared with, with me basically the meta at the time. And just with that basic knowledge, what people were playing and what they were doing, um, I was able to break the top 100. Um, I, I guess the meta hasn't changed that much. <laughs> but meta was mostly Breton versus Stamina Warrior. Yeah. Uh, with Elemental Storm Shield, the Ice Spike was considered the probably tier 0 spell at the time. And what, of the two, three mages that existed... They usually used Ice Spike. And you had to have a, a Stallworm Shield to block that. And then most a lot of people ran Frost. So you had it protected against two big things. Also, um, Bash. Stallworm protects against Bash. And technically, Bash is the best physical resistance piece because it blocks not only Bash weapons, but it also blocks damage from Bashes. By from Shield Bash, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's that's where it separates itself from Cleveland slash. Um, 
So it was Breton versus Stamina Warrior, Elemental Storm Shield, 3 health. That was pretty much the meta. Um, and people, all you did, you cast RE, uh, you shotgun your abilities to ravage the enemy, and then once people are completely ravaged, you just trade one swing. And, you know, whoever whoever crits during that trade basically wins. So it's kind of kind of a war of attrition. Mm-hmm. Obviously, in a meta like that, uh, light weapons won't do so well because light weapons have the highest... They have the lowest base damage, but the highest uh, combo damage modifier. So in a meta where you can't really swing twice, you're dealing P damage. Right. Uh, like, Argonian crits, one-for-one one crits, don't do anything. Like, you need to combo. So, if I can't combo, I'm not doing dam- dealing damage. Um, what's even worse, I, as I explained with the low block, if I was versus an opponent who had the a matching physical resist of the uh, light shield to my weapon, they could, and they had an elemental enchantment on that shield, they could literally sit in low block, I could attack them as if I casted uh, Reckless Fury, and they would beat me. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I can yeah. every single hit, I will die. Um, it was very frustrating as a, as a light, light weapon player. And in the beginning, I uh, ran mostly heavy stamina. I was My slider was 390, 500. So yeah, it was pretty frustrating. <laughs> it didn't stop me from playing, but it was so, so frustrating. Ask any Bloodborne today, I was the biggest rager. <laughs> Booba would try to calm me down all the time. He's like, it's okay. Like, you'll get in there. Booba was the best. I think he was our strongest player at the time. Um, but yeah, he would always calm me down. He's like, it's fine. Don't worry. Yeah, shout out to Booba. Like, I, I know, like, I jumped in the FFA chat yesterday, and uh, you guys are a cool bunch, Bloodborne. So, shout outs to you guys uh, keeping it real. Yeah, join anytime. Anytime, uh, yeah. FFA. Please come uh, chat with us. So you said like you, you rage quit, but what? So like it was like bo- the whole guild that kind of brought you back in after like just to encourage you like hey like stay strong. I mean, you got I, this. I, I, just, I, mean by rage, I just raged a lot. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna quit the game. It's so stupid. I've done. Everyone does that though. Like, <laughs> yeah. Who actually? Who, who, has, who has actually quit after they've said that? Um, <laughs> I guess some some people actually quit, but you I know mean, I would I would vent to Booba and Zaid, Zaid Q at the time. I um, vented to him a lot. It's like, this is so stupid, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, lag plus that bullshit was, you know, yeah, drive anyone crazy. But, you know, there's a huge reason I didn't stop playing. Um, one is because I think deep down I still believe that there was something I was doing incorrectly. Um, and the reason I believe I thought that was because... Um, there was one Argonian light player who was consistently with top 20 during this time, top 30, and it was Cuts with Knife. Uh, he was a combat, uh, he was a relentless light weapon player. And anytime, not anytime I'd get upset, but I'd always, I'd always monitor the leaderboard. And I'd be like, where's Cuts, where's Cuts? How's he doing? I hope he broke top 10 today. <laughs> just, to, just for me, you know, to prove that Argonians can also do it. Right. Argonians can make it's just because Bretons are the meta, take over the arena in terms of numbers, doesn't mean that they are the best. Light weapons can do it too. Right. Um so I'm like, okay, he's doing it. I must be doing something wrong. You know? So uh I don't know. I, after some point I just got sick of playing uh with stamina. And I just decided to just change my build. Like, I was like, why, why do we have to do three health? Why do we have to, uh, gentlemen's agreement, are our, our, our RE? Like, it's like everyone waits, RE, a fight. It's like, back then, fighting began after both people casted RE. Right. And I was like, why do we have to do that? Like, this is stupid. Like, there's two seconds before RE is, or one and a half seconds before RE is even available. Surely there's a faster way to play the game. And so I started to theorycraft. Um, and I thought of a way that, how could I remove my uh, opponent's ability to stop Ice Spike? 
what was the thing everyone did was everyone heavily relied on re and so i was like well the only spell that's faster than re that could stop it is lightning bolt so i was like okay i can lightning bolt them but then what okay i can lightning bolt and then combined with what if i kill their re how can i make it worth it to not just like cut off their re and make them vulnerable to elemental damage and thus conditioned uh, more easily but how can i like uh capitalize off of it so i was like okay kill their re and then make them vulnerable to ice spike so my thing yeah. was light weapons can take the most uh, take the most advantage from uh those two spells uh ice spike and paralyze spells that uh render the opponent uh defenseless in, in a sun in a stunned state or in a paralyzed state because we have the largest uh, combo modif damage fire modifier, so we can take the most advantage uh, during that time. We can deal uh, output more damage. So I thought, well, if I can kill the Ari, army Ari myself, and then somewhere down uh, the fight, maybe a uh, early mid fight or mid fight, throw an ice spike at them that they can no longer defend because they don't have magicka or they don't have RE, then I could just out-damage them. Right? Right. And, like, um, have constant stun, too. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's a this classic is combo. Often. It's pretty popular now. Like you see uh, what Quasar has a good uh, Lightning Bolt, Ice Spike build. Casa. Uh, Casa. Casa's a good one. Um, Snitch had it. For, yeah. He showed me that, too, uh, Snitch. Yeah, Snitch has one, too. And, um, you know, for mage builds, especially in the beginning, like, uh, the, I think one of the reasons the meta was set as it was is because it's harder to get uh, mage pieces. If you don't get two good offensive spells on a ring, and if you don't get good secondaries on it, it's kind of hard to play because you, you, you're you not really min-maxing your stuff, so you kind of lose damage if uh, you don't have like PDOC or EDOC or EDIR or whatever. Um, so it's kind of hard to get those things. So right. in order for my build to work, first I needed to get lightning bolt with ice spike that was what i had in mind i was like i need these two things second to ensure my lightning bolt actually is strong enough to kill their resist elements i want it with maximum power i needed a neck with maximum power in es and i did get one like i got a maximum power uh, enchantment synergy with edr nice and then from there i decided well i don't want to play three health like, I don't know why, like, uh, of course people are playing 3 health because uh, health is tripled in arena, but I was like, why do we have to play that? If, what's 3 health doing if I'm constantly ice spiking you over and over because you couldn't cast RE? It's doing nothing for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I decided to just wear a magic piece and two health pieces, and I kept my slider, so I was 390, 500, and then with a magic piece, I was, what, it put me at 529, 500? So mm -hmm. I was pretty much even. So there was enough magic to cast Lightning Bolt and RE. And now my opponent's kind of like, oh, but, you know, um, they're just kind of sitting there. <laughs> um, the, you know, I actually, before even uh, thinking about this build, I uh, consulted a few of the uh, mage players at the time. Uh, well, Zevron at the time, was he was actually in Bloodborne, so I, I did consult him. And he was of the opinion that Lightning Bolt is... Uh, was a gi gimmicky he's like oh you cast re you kill their re but then like you don't have re and i was kind of confused by that because i was like well you could just re too like you um lightning bolt is super cheap so you know it's not stopping you from REing. um i guess at the time i wasn't the first to try lightning bolt but the people that did do lightning bolt again they played with the three health so they would just throw a really uh, strong lightning bolt, kill the enemy's Ari, but now they didn't have enough magic to Ari themselves. So it was like, okay, we're both going to fight without defense. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of yeah. strange. So I think that's why he thought it was gimmicky, so I can kind of understand. But like nowadays, you see people use it uh, a lot smarter, right? You hit them with lightning bolt and then you cast Ari. So it's that's basically the, the point of the build. I, I, I coined it the Thor build. I don't know, lightning and ice. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool name, yeah. I don't know, give some Nordic feels, I don't know. But, um, yeah. 
and it did it did me wonders. Like I started being some of the best people in the game, like consistently. People just were not prepared for it at all. Um, it took a little while, but people started to be okay. Like I'm gonna go shock pod, kill the kill the uh, lightning bolt, pre press R E, play the game normally. Dagon has one uh, two health. They didn't know I had two health. That means uh, we, we win a war of attrition now because I have more health, he has less health. That extra magic isn't going to do much now. And, you know, if they played the shock pot, then uh, they, they put them in a huge, in a, a great, uh, an advantageous position. I ended season two? Rank five, actually. Season two, wow. Basically, yeah, only a few months after my, uh, like, emergence right. to, like, competitive play. It was insane. Like, what just simple theory crafting could do, um, understanding the meta, and then taking advantage of that. And there's been a few players in recent Blades history who have done something similar that I'm like, I kind of see myself in that. I'm like, wow, yeah, it lives on. Right. It's not It's not just me. Like, I'm not super special. Like, other people also see the game the way I did. So, uh, Dagon, how was your reception with the Thor build and uh, the perception with the others seeing you climb um i had a so much success with it and my guild was actually super stoked they're like wow dig i think you broke the meta um and they were they many many players in bloodborne were just like how are you beating these like are you sure you beat casa are you sure you beat hepa like what no like make sure like are you sure it wasn't a different russian player i know like <laughs> zade was constantly like trying to check me on that. He's like, no, no, you didn't beat Casa. No, I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, isn't this Casa? He's like, oh my god, what? Um, so my, my guild was super stoked about it. But my adversaries, my opponents, people from other guilds were not so happy about it. Um, there was a lot of salt from my climb, and especially because I just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, I was like this like random argonian elemental fighter with a with a fire axe that had fortify fire and minus magicka mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i'm using like um a shock hammer with minus stamina an elven shield and i'm sh bla pew pewing people with lightning bolt and ice spike and they're just like what the hell um so it got mm, i don't know how to put this but um it basically came down to any time I beat someone that was above uh, above my rank, they would say one of three things. It was I. It's because he hosted. He used deadly aversions. He's a switch player, <laughs> or or all of the above. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding, Yoshi. Like, it was ridiculous. Uh, very few people outside of my guild acknowledged me, and I. I wouldn't feel pressed to say like none, like, like no one did actually. Um, my, my early climb, like me trying to make a name for myself. Right. You know, this was this was during a time where like people like, what, the one content creator we had was General Alex, the, right at that time was rank one, but we you know there's obviously some, um, there's a backstory to him and stuff, and I actually had, he was one of the players that was could not stand having lost to me. Um, he absolutely could not have stand. Like, he, he hated it. Um, I actually remember, like, beating him 2-0. In his defense, I did host. Um, beat him 2-0. And I didn't even say anything. I, I, I didn't say anything. He joined, he um, quickly joined GG's. This is at the time when GG's was like a like a baby server, like Booba just made it. Okay. And he was just like, I don't count that as a win. <laughs> I, I don't count I don't count you know, you didn't win. That's not a loss. I didn't lose. And I was like, oh, okay. That's fine. If you want to do a rematch, we can do a rematch. And he was just like, Oh, when you get when you climb up here, yeah, we can do a rematch. Oh, that's so sad that you're lower cups though. I guess you can't. And it was just like, huh? Like, why are you like, dude, like, like, holy crap, he was just so salty. And 
at that time, only my guild really defended me. GA was so popular that people would just side with him, even if what he was saying was incorrect. And I think I was just kind of like, okay, like I, I really had, I had no, um, what's the word? I had no seniority. Mm -hmm. Like this was the guy who made YouTube videos. And if he's saying, well, this person isn't good, then people are just going to say, oh yeah, GA's right. Yeah. Dagon's not good. He doesn't have any skill. And, and there would be people who'd gaslight me and say like, oh, he's not saying that. He's, in, he's not saying you're not good. He's just saying like, you won because of host. And I'd be like, oh, no, here's the screenshot. He's, mm. he's, he's really um, saying that in his public posts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, if that wasn't enough to tell you what kind of character he is, then I don't know what it is. People were just like, no, um, you started it, Dagon. Like, what did I start? I didn't even, I didn't even, I didn't even tell people I beat GA. Like, it was strange. Like, only people in my guild knew. I didn't tell anyone else. And then, like, he basically told everyone that I won <laughs> by making a mockery of it. And that was the worst of it. Actually, that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. It was the worst of it. He was, like, so upset about it. And then he used his um, account sharing tactics to then target players like me. So he'd constantly fight me from lower cups on other uh, accounts like yeah. Kerman. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons he's no longer, you don't see his main anymore. But yeah, it's like, okay, so you never really challenge people on your main. You account share to see see who's playing. Like, that's not really fair, but okay, cool. Um, but yeah, GA was the worst of it. Um, other player, like other um, hiring players, I could name them, all, all uh, accused me of not accused, but discredited my builds or my skill and my climb by doing one of the three. Uh, you're hosting, um, you're a Switch player. Yeah. You use dedicated versions. It's not like, wow, like that was such a good build. No one ever said that. Actually, no one ever said, wow, that was like, where did you come up with this build? And anytime I brought up, well, no, like my build's actually pretty cool. Um, people, even some guild members, not one, um, I don't want to name drop anyone. I don't want to make that. No, it's okay. Bad, but, uh, like I remember one of my former guild mates was like, um, you're not the first to use lightning bolt. Okay. Like it was kind of like, <laughs> oh. and I was like, um, I may have not been the first player to use lightning bolt, but I am damn well the first player to have been as successful with it. Yeah. So have some respect. Yeah. You know, like that's, it was just like that. Like it, it was such an ego fest. Yeah. Like I, like people just could not accept the fact that I had just come into the game and that I had ascended the rank, the ladder so quickly. And people were th like, ah, like I was being accused of hacking the game too by, um, hacking the game. Yes. Okay, well. They, they accused me of hacking the game and saying the only reason I have good stuff is because I hacked the game. There's no way you could, <laughs> There's no way. No, seriously, seriously, seriously. They were like, you cannot have this good equipment in this, in these few months. And I was like, it's called spending money. Yeah. Like, and, um, you know, people will be, see, it is, it is a pay to win game. No, guys, it's, it's still not. Um, I really wanted to find certain items. And there were ferret ferret rings, and by spending money, I could get more ferrite. So that's why I spent money to yeah. get ferrite. Um, so no, because you don't need ferrite to do well in the game. Um, but yeah, it was just like constant, like belittling and discrediting when I was an up and coming player. And looking back at it, uh, and now I have a name for myself, right? I have feats. Right. I have titles. People wouldn't won't say any of that shit to me now, you know? Of course not. But, like, when you come into the scene in the beginning and you're up against people like me now, or, like, uh, who's, like, Ropter or, um, I don't know, I don't want to say Denny. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's, I mean, little genius, who's a constant uh, threat at the top. Like, if, if these people, like are upset that a new player beat them 
if they choose to discredit them, that's the way the public, the Blades community, or majority of the Blades community is going to see them. Right. Right. And in that that negative experience that I had, I really, I don't think I've done it to the best of my ability, but I never, I really wanted to make sure I never made an up and coming, like, prodigy player ever feel the way I did. Right. By, like, the Hall of Champions, basically. Mm -hmm. Just because they lost. And I could recall maybe I did that once to Terry. And I've regretted that. Terry beat me fair and square. Less geared than me. Not even a a lag issue. Excellent player. And I remember, like, blowing up on him once. And, like, I still feel bad about that. But since then, I've just tried my hardest. Mm -hmm. Like, if they're beating me, it's not just hosts. It's not just this. It's not just that. Um, If we're equal skill, equal gear, and they get the host, maybe it is the host. Okay? But, you know, if um, they beat me when I'm hosting them, I'm not going to bring that up anymore. So it's just kind of like, just try and, like... It's really up to the people at top to set an example for how like new players get treated when they come into the scene. Yeah, and they should be sure. encouraged when they take wins. Like that is a that is um, the point of arena. No one has a one hundred percent win rate. No one. Mm-hmm. Like you're supposed to. You're supposed to eat shit. Like you're supposed to drop cups. Yeah. That's how the system works. It's a trickle down economics. I talked to talked to you about this in FFA. Yeah, yes, sir, yeah. The people at top aren't losing. The the ladder literally just won't go up as fast. We need to lose in order for the ladder to keep climbing, for people to keep climbing, for top one hundred to keep moving up. If people aren't beating us, then it's just not going to be moving super fast. So, like. Yeah, it was it was not a great feeling. Talk to me about your season six, then, like uh, you know your first Grand Champ uh, season. How was that like? Yeah, that that season, man. Um, that was very stressful time for me. But I felt some kind of pressure from my guild and from like all the people who were like supporting me. So I was like, you know what, fine, I'm going to play. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. And I did. Um, Ah, so actually, yeah, I, I missed that piece. But uh, the reason I, I made that post was because I had actually fought uh, two times. And I beat him both times. And then I just watched him win trade with to overcome, for him to overcome that loss. So it was like, okay, I, even if I beat him, he's just going to fight Like, so what am I supposed to do? So I just remember grinding out the last, uh, the final day. And I literally did not drop a single loss. I bought, fought so many people. I actually didn't fight on that last day. But I fought so many Dragon's Bane members. Some of the best Dragon's Bane members. I fought uh, so many big names. And like my final fight was actually versus HEPA. Okay. So it was, it was like there couldn't have been a more fitting way for me to get rank 1. It was versus HEPA. And Whoever won that was right. And I somehow, I think I somehow tooled him there. And I was like, it's done. There's not enough time for to come up to recover that. He can't gain enough cups to overcome me. So, you know, we just stopped there. And that was the first time I got Grand Champion. Oh. It was a really good feeling. It felt, it, it felt really deserved on my end. Um, I wasn't super graceful in, in victory. I, I could have said things a lot better to him, but, you know. Uh, I guess people can under- understand, like, you, you went through a lot of pressure and, like, doubt, you know, and I guess, like, you know, it just at the time came up that way. But, you mm-hmm. know, everyone knows, yeah. like, you're a class guy at the end of the day, you know, so that's it. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm just as a... If anyone knows me from this game, they know that I can be incredibly emotional and passionate. And I try not to take that out on people, you know. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it gets the best, of, the better of me. But recently, I think I've been pretty good about it. 
Mm-hmm. What about um, your RF build? Like, uh, you know, I saw it in the arena last season. Yeah. It was incredible. And, uh, yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts on that and your theory crafting about the not being frozen. I create okay. health. Yeah. yeah. So, um, glad you asked that. Uh, Reckless Fury reignited my passion for the game. There's still so many things in this game that haven't been explored. Reckless Fury is actually one of them. But for me personally, I hadn't done it. Especially with the relent- uh, Relentless Combo Weapon. So, um... Reckless Fury, Reckless Fury, Reckless Fury. I know many people have already played me. Uh, played versus me on Reckless Fury. Many people have actually beaten me too. I guess, uh... So, um... I'm definitely not harder for the uh, for most players on Reckless Fury. People have uh, played against it so much that they, they know how to counter it well. So bravo to that. I think that's great. Um, but there are certain ways to make Reckless Fury almost uncounterable. And as you said, uh, you, you, you asked the question about how to be unfreezable right. as a Reckless Fury player. Requires very, very good timing. But if uh, people who have been playing the game should be aware that in order to condition someone, you have to deal X amount of elemental damage within five seconds. And that uh, elemental damage is uh, depends on the enemy's max health. So if I am near death in crit range, or even at one health, I am basically no longer eligible to be frozen because you can no longer deal the necessary amount of frost damage to free within five seconds to freeze me mm-hmm. because I don't take damage. I have one health. So you're hitting me and you're like, why isn't he getting frozen? Well, it's because you can't deal what 200 frost damage to a one health target in five <laughs> seconds. Incredible, man. Thinking outside the box. Right. Um, and honestly, I think uh, some veteran reckless free players have probably learned of that just through, purely through playing it, or if they've experienced it, and maybe they they, may, they might have not understood why they weren't getting frozen. But um, the reasoning just it just makes sense. All right, uh, the balance is there, and uh, you know, obviously it, it's you, it's it's doable, but it's it's a hard condition to meet if the enemy is playing with a fortify frost minus stamina weapon. However, versus a Fortify Frost minus Magical Weapon is quite easy to achieve. Because they can never max your stamina, and you can just wait to cast Ari until you're in crit range. Right. And I did that um, a few times, even even for some of the best players. So, um, yeah. I love Reckless Fury. It's so fun. It's such a fun ability. It has so many counters, um, it, as it should. As it should. <laughs> it has... You can ravage the opponent, you can freeze the opponent, you can paralyze the opponent. Even Reckless Fury can beat Reckless Fury if you cast Reckless Fury after right. the enemy's Reckless Fury. That's it. It just it has a damage reduction. Heavy armor, or uh, the correct light armor with physical resistance plus the correct shield, just blocking. Hit block hit block and now they're attacking into a high block heavy shield or light shield with the appropriate uh physical resistance and you take you can there's so many ways to mitigate the damage the only time it doesn't really work is if the reckless fury player is in crit range which is what you want to avoid when playing into a a reckless fury player because if they're in crit range and they have the appropriate um secondaries like uh physical damage at crit health well that means they're at their strongest and even with like the appropriate physical resistances and shield the reckless fury player can just tear through that they're just dealing too much damage right you don't want to put a reckless fury player into crit health yeah of course did you have a crit health on your build at the time last season oh, yeah oh yeah I four i had four. Oh no uh three three i wish i had four uh, uh, i did through. have four pda though i had four pda and four are three physical damage at crit health. So wow. I do tons of damage if I'm in crit crit range. You don't want to put me in crit range. Um, wow. 
So yeah, it's super fun. You just it's like it you don't really get that much dopamine rush. Like I feel like Reckless Fury is like one of the only things in this game that gives you that much of a dopamine rush. It's like you get it off and it's like, okay, you're dead. <laughs> like enjoy. Oh, I, I yeah. want to try it now. Uh, but the thing is, like, I, I used to have like some rings with like you know crit health physical damage increase and uh crit health elemental increase but like i kind of threw them away because i've always been like a mage player kind of thing but uh yeah, yeah it, it sucks yeah. yeah right that's another thing about this game that i really like i think it's so well balanced that even the things we think are terrible maybe aren't as terrible as we think they are right like crit health crit health is best in slot for reckless fury you want crit, crit health yes even the defensive ones like they're good very good like okay like uh that's that's one of the reasons why my passion for the game was reignited i want to get stuff like that because you know we, we we have this mindset that this is the way the game should be played this is good this is not why is it why is this good why is this not well crit health it only activates at a certain level in arena and two-handers just kill you okay well not everyone's a two-handed player right and against light weapon players, they'll do they'll do zero damage if I have four crit health, uh, a resistance, a physical damage at uh, crit health, and elemental resistance at crit health. They just can't kill me, right? Right. Um, or like I've even thought about stuff like this. Like, what if uh, no health? Screw it. Why even play health? Who cares? And um, play no health, and then. Uh, do what I said about uh, the frosting. M make them put you into crit health. And then, because a lot, what some people do is they play slow versus Reckless Fury players. And they'll, like, try to ravage them without dealing too much damage so they don't get into crit health. Well, what if you have no health? You can't play slow anymore. I take two, three, four hits, I'm in crit. So, now you can't play SL, right? So there's so many ways and there's so many different kinds of builds that you can... Um, like build in this game it's so diverse but I think some people just like again like the the game should be played a certain way or generally speaking there's a, like this is a, a generally good build versus most builds now so that's what I'm going to do and I think that's probably more accurate to describe the current mindset on meta like well most mage players are gonna you know do frostbite ice spike you need to have some kind of innate Frost resistance going into this, or some kind of a magic, uh, magicka, defensive spells, spell resist or whatever, or even just always run a frost pot, right? Right. You're probably gonna run. Into that. No one really plays reckless fury, so you don't have to prepare for those things. But it's cool to see, like, if if it is viable, then the meta ship, the meta swap shifts, right? Right. Now yeah, people, okay, how do I deal with this reckless fury? Freaking Dagon's coming here. Mm -hmm. What am I gonna do? Round one, I'm prepared for. A f uh, an annoying mage, but then I have to deal with this freaking Reckless Fury player, you know? So, it's stuff like that. And I actually, like, people um, aren't aware of this because they don't really play with Reckless Fury, but um, the metal perk that uh, in improves abilities by abilities, right. crit health actually increases the duration of Reckless Fury. And this I'm going to credit, this isn't with, I tested it and found this out, but with, uh, I ran the test because uh, Ravina, your, your guildie actually asked about yeah. it. And that's incredible, right? Mm -hmm. No one's really talked about this. Metal shit, why would any one go metal? Crit health is bad, blah, blah, blah. So we're never going to ever basically explore crit health because it's out of the picture because, you know, our Blade's forefathers have determined that crit health isn't worth exploring. Well, maybe it is. And it is a, a route I want to explore with my alt. Not with my main. I think my main I'm going to keep a mage. But I did test uh, Reckless Fury out a lot with my main. And it's something I do want to uh, in investigate in the future. Yeah. What about the mag uh, mage side? Mage side? Yeah, like, uh, you have any, like, have you ever tried, like, you know, um, Echo Weapon or, um, Magicka Surge, or even like no, Consuming I, I Inferno. The uh, Reckless Fury uh, equivalents, the the tree equivalents. I've never tried Magicka Surge or Echo Weapon. Um, 
I know a few other people tried. I know Zahar, as uh, Leo actually said in your interview, Zahar's. Yeah. I faced against, that. and actually, I remember. I'm pretty sure he's either he's definitely taken rounds for me with a. He might have even taken a match for me with his magic assert. Um, but I don't know. I haven't tried it. I don't think those are worth testing out. Um, just based on what I know. Echo weapon. You spend a bunch of magicka to. I don't know. It, okay, so. I have to spend like 400 magicka, is it 400 magicka, to use this spell that makes my physical hits deal more damage, basically. Um, so if I land on an attack speed, that means if I get frozen, okay, Echo Weapon's pretty freaking useless. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, you know, it already you're off to a bad start. If your spell, if you're a mage and, and you're getting countered by frost, that's kind of bad. It just kind of doesn't make sense as a spell with mages. Like, with mages, mages are one of those classes that can actually like fight frost. Right. You know, they don't care as much. We can uh, recur, recast our resist elements, get out of the condition. Frost spells, uh, compared to the other offensive spells, have lower base damage. They trade that for utility. So, if uh, this is a good example, if I fa fight Blazar. My frost build versus his fireball frostbite, he destroys me. Like, it's not even close. His fireball is just, just too much damage, mm -hmm. and my ice spike is never going to stick to where it's going to matter, right? All right. So just consider it GG. <laughs> so in a in a mage mage v mage fight, it's just like okay, what is Echo Evan doing? I'm oh, not Echo Evan. Yeah, but like it loses to frost. Say I get Echo Evan off, uh, and now the mage decides to frostbite me. <laughs> it's like okay. I don't know. That's my, my thoughts with uh, Echo Weapon, at least. Sad that it doesn't have utility, but I do feel like it's like that for other spells, too, like Consuming Inferno. You know, like, yeah, we saw Zenny use it back in the day, but mm. not as much now. You know? And, and here, actually, yeah. I'm very, very curious about Consuming Inferno. I actually think it's a very, very, very strong spell. Um, I currently have a really good ring with it, but I think... Actually, I think Swan has a really good Consuming Inferno Frostbite ring. It's kind of sad to not see him use it anymore. I actually think it's super strong. Um, really? So, something that I think mage players don't really explore as much is EDOC. Um, yeah. EDOC is insanely powerful with Frostbite, Consuming Inferno, Poison Cloud. Yeah. Um, and actually, I remember watching um, Blue Label's last video and he said he said there's basically two ways to damage people one is to condition them and to proc the physical opportunist uh secondary enchantment or right. people not with uh you know and it's a i think it's a really great way to summarize it um yeah. not wrong most people seek a pdoc and condition and you know press strikes yeah double tap yeah um but what about edoc could you beat someone by just pressing blue button? Yes, you you can actually. Well, you mentioned um, Swanee. He has that, he has that like mindset, I believe. You know who? Uh, Swanee or Swan? Yeah, Swan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think Swan's a good example. Of that. Like, like, why? No offense to Swan, but if if he's just gonna press blue button, what is P Doc doing for him? Right. It does nothing. The only time it does something is if an enemy runs into your stun. But you know, the higher the rank, the the better the player, and they even even if they're lagging, like sometimes they just won't make that mistake. So you can't. It's not reliable. Uh, it's not a reliable strategy. Like oh, they'll just run into my stun, right? Mm -hmm. They'll just run into my high block. Um, something I wish, I wish I had Swan's Rings to test, is yeah. his consuming infernal frostbite. I actually think that's one of the strongest combos. Uh, I think so Freeze too, just because. And then like, the non-retail, right? So much damage, yeah. And they, you're right. They also dodge retail. So you, they have frost retail. You're like, okay. They have fire retail. Okay. Consuming inferno. And like, it's one of those spells. Like, you kind of have to trade into it. It does so much damage by itself that if you just stand there and take it, like you will, you will get out traded. Mm -hmm. Um. But again, it's one of those. It's consuming inferno is an annoying spell like frostbite, where they can cancel it during any time. And if they cancel it, now you're stunned. 
Right. I actually think consuming zero is so strong, and I think um, I wish uh, mage players ex uh, experimented with more. And again, this is, it's hard to say because uh, you need the rings. Like you can't just be like, okay, today I want to play Consuming Inferno and not have the rings. You know, that's it. That's where it's different with uh, abilities. But um, yeah, I you know Swan, if you if you watch this, please experiment with your Consuming Inferno more. Use uh, abuse Frostbite, freeze them, Consuming Inferno. Um, pro like get them conditioned. You know, this is uh, get them conditioned, and now when they're conditioned, if you have four E Doc. Bam. Level 14 Consuming Inferno. Just burn him alive. For just real. Look at the day. And, yeah, I, I, seriously, I, I think there's just so much that's uh, that's not really played with. And part of it is gear, and I'll admit. But I think, you know, it's been, it's been quite a few years to where I think people probably have come across the gear, and maybe they just trash it because they're like, ah, this isn't what I'm looking for. Yeah. But, hmm. Yeah, even, like... People don't eat, you know, what's the, uh, like, rule of thumb for stamina players? They're like, nope, don't level up any of your abilities. Right? Right. Um, but who's to say that maybe playing a high-ranked guard breaker is bad? You know, imagine if that lands. That's Ice Spike on abilities. High-ranked focusing dodge. You know, high-ranked adrenaline dodge. Like, like people, you know, I feel like there's so many different ways to play the game, especially on the stamina side. But we just kind of see the same things over and over. We rarely even say things like re reflecting bash. Yeah, I reflecting saw you. Bash. Yeah, the other day. You you saw me. You, yeah, I that was a really against. smart. Yeah. I don't I don't have any magicka. You think I need war water absorb? No, I have reflecting bash and focusing dodge. Mm -hmm. And uh, reflecting bash, uh, you know, I'm gonna credit credit this one with uh, Strider. He's uh, he's played. Reflecting Bash, and he's uh, believed in the Bash when he uh, plays his versatile build. But um, it is so good. It is so good. Um, I wish it... I think it requires the most skill and knowledge to use out of all the other Bashes. But at the same time, it's also... it's Even if you kind of whiff it, like, for example, you don't time it to... Like, perfectly. Against a spell, it... it you're fine as long as the spell hits during the during the bash. It's protecting you. You know you right. don't need ward. You don't need absorb if you're high stamp. Like that's an option you can go. You know. And um, yeah, I did try a high high <laughs> a high rank guard breaker, and it wasn't. It was just troll. It was kind of troll, but it's just funny. You know, like this. There's, there's different things you can do. I will say, don't ever go high ranked reckless fury. It is freaking terrible. The stamina cost becomes so insanely high, and for minimal damage increase. Right. Okay. If it increases the duration of invulnerability, sure, it doesn't. It's, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the extra 10, 20 damage is enough. I don't think it is though. To warrant it. No, I don't think so. But what about yeah. uh, what about piercing strikes? I mean, I was thinking about that. Like maybe maybe having it at three, and that would probably help to condition faster, right? Because yeah, no, I, yeah, that's yeah. been explored. I'm pretty sure Stamar uses a high rank. Piercing strengths, doesn't he? I think he has it like um, at three or something. I would have to double check I think though. That was per Ezareth's recommendation to him because stamina Stamar plays with a lot of stamina. Right. It's again, if you're if you're gonna play with a lot of stamina, like buff up buff up some of your abilities. Right. You know, it's not it's not just um mages that, that benefit from that. Some of the abilities actually benefit a lot from it. You know, some don't, and it's better to keep it at one. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a level, a level ten, staggering bash is insane. Who knows? Or Harry like, bash, <laughs> just to like uh, can take away their abilities completely. <laughs> See the manual. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. Imagine hitting someone with level what? What's the highest it can go? Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen Harry bash. Yeah. You think you thought double ravage was necessary? No, they can't play the game. <laughs> like, you know, there's so many different ways to play the game. Like, I, I just, and I feel like people. Um, this, I'm gonna give a shout out to Randall. Um, he knows how to have fun in this game. Yeah, and it's good to see him. It's good to see him back. But that guy knows how to just laugh and just have fun. This guy has hit me with I don't even know, man. He he used to have this freaking skull crusher build. Holy crap, dude! 
Skull Crusher, was he, I think he was, I don't think he was two-handed weapon, I think he was two-handed versa, and he'd hit me with the highest level Skull Crusher, and it would do 800 damage. Jesus. <laughs> it was just like, okay, like, calm down, please. But you know what I'm saying, like, people, like, it's not, like, you can play that, that's viable. Have fun. Like, it's not, it's not just about, like, block quick strikes, you know? You know, in terms of PvP balance, you know, let's say if the game devs came to you and said, "Would you do anything different?" You, you kind of, you kind of seem like you have this um, stance on like the game is pretty balanced as it is, which is fine. You know what? Why I agree. You know, to a certain extent. Um, I, I wish I could give you a definite answer, but I still, I actually am not knowledgeable enough to give you one because I haven't tested everything. Because I could say, oh, let's buff this and that. If, but if I've never played it or never seen it in play, it doesn't mean it's not good. Yeah, but you could you always know? buff it. And then, like, if you see, like, you know, but anything. But over buff then. Because, you know, my, my own ignorance became my worst enemy. But if I was to want to see a, something viable, maybe it's viable, I don't know. If I, if I wanted to see a viable build, it would be a lifesteal build. And um, I wish a vampire was. Strong. Yeah. Um, and there's a reason it isn't, because it was apparently really strong on release, and they nerfed it. Cause it uh, so do you know the uh, healing enchantment? Fortify healing? Like it spells, uh, abilities... And food heals more. Oh, that, the the really yeah by seventeen, right? Armor. Yeah. Apparently, that applied to vampire on release. So, imagine just playing three of that with three vampire, and light fighter was like one of the strongest races. Because now every time I swing, I heal like what, fifty, sixty, seven. I don't even know, dude. Like they were healing so much, forty maybe forty, fifty on hit. Wow. So like you know, I, I'd still I'd love to see a life steal build though because life steal has been a thing in in blades as well like uh, not blades uh, um like all the elder scrolls that's like a thing and um it's only really viable in PVE it's kind of sad though I'd love to see a, a life a premier life steal build and I know uh, shout out to Wolverine I yeah think he I was about does to say that some kind of life stealing build um. But I guess what I'm thinking about is kind of like a life, like a like, like a blood knight of sorts, like some kind of um, like a tanky uh, drain tank. Yeah, I guess what, you would Wolf have like absorb. Kind of he's he's like a squishy uh, life steal for, uh, player. Yeah, it's a little different than what I'm thinking about. But like something like a max physical resist, heavy armor. Every time you trade swings, you're basically healing. Like that kind of uh, build, I think would be really cool. But you know, I haven't tried it before, so maybe maybe it is viable. I just haven't tried it, but yeah. No, I like that. I like that mindset. Like, yeah, I would probably equip like you know absorb with like healing surge, and then maybe have oh, adrenaline yeah. dodge. I love just be like exactly. There, there you go, Yoshi. Like that's the kind of thinking I, I love. Like, fuck it, play the fortify healing, run a, absorb and healing. Uh, Healing Surge. Swords and Adrenaline Dodge. You know what I'm saying? Like, stuff like that. Like, I think that would be really cool. But you don't really see it too much. That's it. You don't see it at all, actually. But but I feel like the meta now, it's like, it's 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 because, like, you know, everyone's, and their grandmother has, like, a dual Ravage weapon, you know, and, like, the dual Ravage shields. And it's like, you know, I guess, well, for me, I'm, for me, like, I have a pretty balanced slider. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so I could probably get Ravage more quickly than others. But, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, eventually, you know, some people will just get too ravaged to do the high level spells mm -hmm. like, you know, Reckless Fury or, you know, Magicka Surge, you know, and that's why we see like, you know, low cost, uh, low cooldown abilities that dominate the meta now yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in actually healing and uh, life stealing, sustaining a sustained build would actually be better in a war of attrition. Mm -hmm. If I ravage you, you ravage me, your subsuming rings and sorcerer rings no longer do anything. Right. But my vampire always does something, because health is a resource. So, I feel like vampire would have actually been quite good in the early 
even after um like if both people are, are ravaged and if the other say the other player is playing subsuming although i doubt at the time people were playing subsuming as much because i think most people played um like uh elemental yeah element, yeah so in that case the the element's probably going to do more but you know say like i'm playing against a subsuming or a sorcerer player now my healing is actually is doing something because they don't have any more resource bar but right i know bastard like he's a he's a french player from uh often's guild that came with us ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he he's kind of has like a wolverine build and like i've seen some of his matches where like his health regenerated o over time and like uh he did equip the the health rings and stuff and we told him not to but you know who are you know he just he found his way doing that and which is which is fine but yeah, it was see, cool to see, see what i'm saying like let people cook yeah let them cook like let people play and you know um, discover new things. Like, don't let the the high ranked players tell you how to play. Because um, maybe, like, I don't think we know everything. There's we don't, still so yeah. much to be tested. Discover the game, you know. Yeah, that's that's just kind of the what I what keeps me interested and what keeps the game real playable for me is that I still haven't um, uncovered everything. And there's some things I want to test. What about um, closing thoughts? about the game closing thoughts um honestly just it's it's super fun i plan to play it for as long as it's open or until elder scroll 6 comes out <laughs> yeah so probably for a while because i don't know elder scroll 6 probably not gonna be a few more years hopefully they don't kill the <laughs> server yeah until, until then but you know i hope to enjoy it still and get some awesome gear hope everyone gets the gear they're looking for yeah make the arena more interesting that's it well Dagon uh, thank you so much for this interview you know you're you're an awesome competitor grand champ and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to do this yeah for sure thank you for interviewing me and as well as uh, the others too it's, it's been an honor oh it's my pleasure as well likewise so uh, yeah it's it thanks again and uh, talk to you soon man thanks thanks Yoshi no problem, peace.